Okay, so you decided to tackle the Olympic questions, I mean function questions in the AMC and various countries Olympics. Well, welcome to the, to the course, the lesson about functions. Now, I would just like to spend about two minutes just talking about it. Functions, it's one of those things that, how, how should I put it? Um, they are, it's a branch in mathematics where it's very theoretical, okay? And it's a branch of mathematics where if you don't have that interest or if you don't have that yearning to know about, more about functions, you will soon and you'll be very quickly be turned down by it. Why? Because at least for calculus, okay, you, it can tell you to integrate a certain function and then you find, you manage to find the integral or you differentiate and then you feel that sense of, of relief, that sense of achievement that at least you can integrate something. Now, for the aspect about functions or the concepts about functions, it's not really the case because it's really, there's nothing much you can do with it, really. If you've got a function fx is equal to something, there is not much that you can do about it other than using it to, to, to do something. Okay, or as in putting values of x inside to get a certain value of y. Now I know that I'm not really an expert at it, but at least at my level of how I know functions, there, there seems to be that, that perception that functions is boring. Now if you had that perception, I don't deny it. It's, I think it's boring, you know, well at least maybe for you. But I must say it's one of those topics that you really need to have an interest in for you to do well, or at least for you to study more advanced level stuff about functions. So as an introduction, um, we'll just do touch on things very lightly. So you can represent the function as what else? Function of f, okay, something like that. And then you will get something like x squared, okay. So I just, I mean, many of you see this a lot, but let's just spend some time to really analyze what it is, okay. It means that oh, you got a function, okay, f here, okay, and then you got I would like to call a, a group of, of values for for x. And then you've got another group of values over here, which are, is, is function of, of x, which will imply the function. Or another common way is that people just write y. Okay, that's fine. So this is what a function does. You take a certain value in, in a set of x or in a group of x, and then you put it inside the function. The function does some funny thing to it, okay? And then you will get another value over here, which is the function of x. So it's quite easy and quite easy to understand. Now some terms is that, for the values of x or the certain values that we permit to use for x, those values is called the domain. Okay, it, we call it the domain. Okay, a proper term we would call it be the domain of the function. Okay, because you see, x can take any real value: one, two, three, four, five, one point five, you know, negative. Okay, but there's only a certain certain amount of values of x which is applicable to the to the function, or is there is only a certain amount of values we can use when we want to use the function f, okay? And that, that amount of values is called the domain. So more clearly showing it, you can picture x as this big group of numbers over here, and the domain of x is a certain group of numbers that we can use for the function of f. Okay, and then you come over here, and you got another group of values, and this values is called the range of f, the range of the function fx, likewise the domain of the function fx, okay? So, whatever values you have in the domain, you apply the function and obviously you get another value and then that is, it spans the range. So you can only attend a certain amount of, of values from the domain of x, okay? And, and that is essentially what it means. You will, I will give you a graphical representation or why don't I just show it to you now, okay? For example, we got a, a, a graph like that, okay? So let's just say that the x-axis is whatever number, you know, whatever number we have. So the domain would be from here to here. Let's just call it A and B. That means for this certain function, we, can only, we are only permitted to use the range of values from A to B, okay? And that is represented here. And this, function, okay, this graph is representing the function f of x. So, if we put in a, we get a number here, and we put in b, we get a number here. This constitutes the range, okay? Because, you see, only from this domain, we can churn our only values within here as shown by the graph. Now, I'm going to show you a more detailed view in the subsequent lessons when we are dealing with more complex functions, as this is just an introduction, so we don't need to, to do that for now, okay? But lastly, this is a very good trick, okay? If you want to handle function questions, this is a very, very good trick that you should know right, from, right to begin with, and I'm going to tell you now, okay? Yes, you write functions in this way. 
Okay, now let's just say we got a function like this. Function x is equal to the square root of x. So we put a value of x inside. We would, to get the, the, the result of the function, we take the square root of that value that we put inside. Okay, but the trick is to rewrite this in a more appropriate way. And that is to write it like this, okay? A blank, and it's equal to a square root of a blank here, okay? Why do I say that? Because whatever you put inside here, notice that you do not necessarily need to put numbers, okay? And, and I'm, not, I'm not joking about this, okay? Or oh, minus two minus three point five. You see, we don't necessarily need to put numbers inside there. But what you can do is that you can put variables which represent numbers, okay, such as 2y. You see, because the function is that we, whatever we put inside here, we take the square root of that, okay? So we can put 2y inside here and then take the square root of that to map the domain or to map a certain value in the domain to a certain value in the range. And let's just say we represent that number as 2y. Okay? There, is no, there is no regulation that we cannot do that. Assuming, of course, that, that y is a certain real number, or at least y is a number. Now, I know that if you want me to reduce into more specific terms, 2y needs to be in the domain of the function x. Okay? But we need to work on that in the subsequent lessons. But I just want to just tell you now, or at least as a start, there is no restriction that we cannot put variables inside here. Okay? That is why a good trick is to rewrite it as this way. The function of a certain blank is equal to the square root of that. I mean, whatever the function may be. So if you got function of x is equal to x squared, you can rewrite it as the function of a blank is equal to that blank squared. And there you go, an introduction of functions, and I hope you enjoy the lessons. Okay? Yep.